In today's video, we are taking a look at how clean water is. Rainwater, snow water, and the water from your sink. Water, water everywhere, and lots of it to drink. We could actually drink water, water a lot of this and be just fine. Lots of it to drink. Yeah, so right here we have five varieties of water, and by that we mean they're from five different sources. Callie, what have you got right in front of you? Well, it looks nasty, Nate. It I'm does look kind of nasty. This is rainwater. We literally, like, this bowl was just sat out, and on a slightly warmer day this winter, uh, we had rain and stuff. I think there was also some wind. Yeah, so it picked up a lot of stuff as it was coming down. So we've got some dirt, some other stuff. Anyways, this But is perhaps rainwater. a realistic test about what happens if you just try and collect yeah. rainwater outside. I'm um, gonna say I would not drink this. I would see this I'd in a cup. I'd want to run it through a filter. Yeah, um, so anyways, this one's rainwater. You got this one. This it was one, snow. which has foil over it. It says snow. At this point, it is no longer snow. Uh, I knew that while we had snow falling at the time, it may not continue, and right now there's no snow outside. So we while it. there was snow, I went and gathered a bunch. It had already fallen and landed on the ground, so it is possible there was surface contamination because it had been there for a day or two. But you see, sometimes kids will go out, scoop a handful of snow, and bite into it. We want to test why. how clean that may be. How good of an idea that is. This is not going to be an end-all proof of everything test, but we are going to do a few different things to check on these things. In specific, we want to see once we get rid of the water in water, what's left. And then I think what we're also going to do is take a sample swab from each of these sources and see what kind of bacterial growth we get off of it. So that'll be something a little bit later down the line. We're actually going to have Petri dishes sitting out for Maybe a couple days, yeah. maybe a week. We'll it's, see what it takes. This video is going to be spread out over however long we think it takes to grow bacteria in a dish of agar. Huh. Um, so, the next one up, this is tap water. Oh, Obviously, sink. the results of tap water are going to vary from city to city and perhaps even house to house, depending on your pipes. How near your house is, how old your house is. I tried to clean this container out, rinse it, and then filled it up with tap water. Did you rinse it with tap water? I did rinse it with tap water. So tap water to clean the tap water container. Yep. Dasani, I was about to open it and drink it to be funny, but that would contaminate it. We want this sealed. We're going to open it up, pour it right into our tray, and call it good. So we didn't pick Dasani for any particular reason. I just grabbed a bottle off the shelf that looked like a good one to try. It was on the shelf. It was clear. He it's got it. It's possible that every brand of water would give you a different result, but there's like 30 of them. We weren't planning to test all of them. They do have different pH balances. Don't actually know where Dasani falls on that level, but that's okay. Then lastly, we have distilled water. This is made by boiling water, taking the steam and condensing it. It's supposed to be the most pure that doesn't have any minerals or contaminants in it at all. And it's just water. It should just be hydrogen and oxygen bonded together. So we're gonna take all five of these. We're going to weigh off equal amounts according to this scale, which is not perfect, but it's pretty accurate. And we're going to put them into this cupcake pan, which is new and has never been contaminated by cupcakes. <laughs> and then we're going to freeze dry it and we're going to see what's left. All There's right, now we're going snow, on to sir. snow I would say water. stir it a little bit. I, uh, yeah. Get the contaminant in there. I don't know, like if the dirt falls right out the bottom, then that's fine. I think what we're kind of simulating is if you just melted some snow and drinking it, if it falls out that easily, it falls out that easily, that's okay. But I have mixed this up. So any really small stuff is definitely in there. All right, we're gonna go throw this in our freeze dryer. We'll come back in 24 hours for this one. We'll take a look at it. All right, next experiment we're going to try. We want to test for bacterial cleanliness <laughs> in all of these types of water. So we have what's called agar, or sometimes it's called agar agar. It's a vegetable gelatinous goop stuff. It's really good for growing bacteria. Bacteria love it and I don't know, maybe I have a cold or something. That doesn't smell very bad no, to me. No, it smells like something. It smells like it already has bacteria in it. We're, we're going to take swabs of all of the types of water and just cover these dishes in it, and then we're gonna let them sit in a warm room for about three days. And Callie just added a little bit of saliva to this one, and our mouths are generally disgusting. And That's so gonna go crazy. That one is most likely 
to have bacterial growth. But we're gonna try all five kinds of our water, yep. our distilled, bottled, tap, rain, and snow, and see if any of them have bacteria issues that we should know about as well. The reason I like that one is because as Nate was opening the package, this one fell open. We are going to try and keep the other ones as non-contaminated as possible. I'm gonna put on some gloves. That one, I think it's also just kind of, is bacteria growth actually happening? If nothing grows on that one, it means that Kelly either gargled with acetone or there's something wrong with all of these petri dishes or we're just doing something wrong with them. Grab another one, let's swab your phone. That's a pretty common one. When you're trying to test for bacteria, the places you're gonna find it, you're gonna hate this. Uh, of course, you're gonna find it on like restroom door handles. You're gonna find it uh, uh, on sub seats, door handles, light switches, phones. Those are some of the most uh, common places to find bacterial growth. Uh, keyboards as well, so you know guys, Maybe take uh, some Clorox wipes to your surfaces in your house every now and then, just to be safe. Dampen the swab. Now swab it around in the water to pick up any bacteria. Good. Okay, Good. yep. And now it's, uh, you are supposed to gently touch and sort of roll the cotton swab over the surface. The idea is not to break the surface of the agar agar. Yeah, it's just on top. Don't reuse your sponges, obviously. This now in the trash. Nothing really contaminated. This is water, but a new one. Each one of these little packets has two, so this is another sterilized one. All right, tap water next. Obviously, I think snow and rainwater is gonna have the most chances to have something in it. So for both the rainwater and snow water, I'm kind of running it along the edges, so whatever, all the sediment that's filtered to the bottom, just run that along there. Okay. Just to test a couple more things. Again, controls for fun. The ear goes down. The buttons, maybe. Yeah, sound down buttons. Where my mouth goes, just where my fingers go on the screen. Yeah, let's get the power, the volume buttons. Just really try and pick up whatever's on there. Sometimes it's not even from your fingers. It's from the surfaces that you set your phone on. Your phone is on so many surfaces all day just because you carry it around with you, and it's going to be set on tables and chairs and places that you might not think about. So that's Nate's phone. OK, Mark, I'm coming for you. Here, here we go, don't move. So Mark's camera might have had the most interesting growth that we saw. We also aren't entirely sure everything that's on Mark's camera right now. It's been through a lot, a lot of explosions, a lot of messes. It's gone with us everywhere. Well, Mark, you had some, just a little bit of what looks like dirt from his camera. All right, so we have the four types of water and then just for fun, we have something from each of us. We're going to go put these in our utility closet. One of the rooms just in the basement. It's dark, it doesn't get disturbed a lot. The door doesn't open a lot, so there's not a lot of airflow in it. it. Stays a nice, pretty consistent 80 degrees. So that's where we want these. We want this stuff to basically sit out between 80 and 100 degrees for at least 12, 24 hours. 12 hours, we should be seeing some sort of growth. After about 48 hours, we should have, I guess, colonies forming. So we'll see what we've got then. All right, it's been a few days with our uh, Petri dishes just sitting there with the potential bacteria growing on them. So let's take a look at both the bacterial growth and the result of our freeze drying effects. So we did freeze dry water twice because we ran it through once, we wanted a little bit more residue, and so we added the same amount of water a second time, put it back through the freeze dryer. This is actually kind of interesting. What I'm learning, is that the tap water here at the studio has a lot of minerals in it. A ton. So here we go, we've got our control, which is not quite as empty as I would have thought. I do believe that while it was freeze drying, the bubbling of the water maybe actually threw some droplets around, and so we may have had a little bit of contamination, but for the most part, I think we are still seeing some fairly clear results. Rain we have some interesting effects. There's a little bit of this scattered white, and then you can see sort of the outline of what looks like it was maybe a water spill, and I think what happened is all of the water like dissipated down until there was just like this one little blob left, and that's that was like as saturated as the minerals could get in the water, and then when it started sublimating from there, it started leaving the residue behind. Over here at Snow, there is a little bit more, but it is more heavily on the side of the tap water, so some of it, I think, did splash over, like I was talking about. I saw what it did to the Petri dish. Put it down, thank you. That's a good point. Our bottled water, that same thing I was talking about with the rain, there's this sort of the same effect, but it's much smaller, so it could be that the same thing happened, but there's just this one little blob shape right there. It's, well, with Dasani, we even saw the they add some minerals back mm -hmm. for flavoring, so it yeah. would make sense that there's a residue. Yeah, there should be some. Mm -hmm. Distilled, 
about as expected, seems to be completely empty. There's no residue, there's no spots. It's just gone, all gone. The snow, what's interesting about it is, I don't know if we'll be able to see this on camera, Little but I'm just gonna, grains. I'm gathering this up. There's definitely stuff other than like the white mm -hmm. that we're getting from the tap water. There you go. Tap water is white. The snow is gray. This has dust. This is the dust that's in the snow, and this is why your parents may have told you don't eat snow. It's even like clean looking snow can be very dirty. Mark's camera <laughs> has what looks like the most different growth. So here's our little bacteria volcano. This one's got its own weird texture that the others don't seem to have. And then there are some little points in there that we'll look at with our microscope that seem to have a lot more color. Here's the growth on the, uh, from tap water. Just these sort of roundish bubble shapes. And as you and I were discussing off camera just now, just because something is growing bacteria doesn't necessarily mean it's dangerous, it just means it's in our environment. It's just something that's, yeah, it's, it's gonna be there. It's just very odd to see what happened from a few days of tap water being on the counter and then going into a petri dish over the weekend. That this, one's bizarre. This is from my phone, but okay. it's like the only thing from mm -hmm. my phone. All right, this is from rainwater. It looks very similar to yeah. the tap water growth. There's just a lot more of it. Mm -hmm. Very excited little bubble colonies. All right, Mark's camera. This has the most interesting ones, I think. Yeah. So we've got this blob here, which looks like a weird brain sort of thing, but like a very small one. Tiny little red dot. We've got this like volcano looking thing. It is a little bit from the side, so you can see the shape and how it's three dimensional popping up out of the tray a bit. So we've got a fuzzy looking one over here. It looks like some kind of mold growth spore. Got a couple with some good color on them. It's very pink. I think I saw, yep, there's a yellow one. That, little, that yellow one seems to have tiny little strands growing out from it as well. This is from your spit. Great. Gross. 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 Everything's gross. Okay, so snow and rain look about the same. That makes sense. Snow, rain, mm -hmm. and tap water. All of those mm -hmm. pretty similar. So, camera. Did, did still get anything from that? Phone. Oh, no, that's and just saliva the table. had a little bit of different stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, distilled. I, distilled I and nothing. Dasani, perfectly safe. Bottled water seems mm -hmm. to be pretty bacteria free, which is good. Makes sense. Guys, that's not all. You know, we've always got more for you to see. Hit that box up at the top for our latest video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.